Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Skåne here in the south of Sweden. We're going to return to a brewery who you've seen me review a good number of things from now, but they always seem to throw up something really quite interesting. So we're going to go back to Landskrona, which is where I work at the moment, and we're having a taste of yet another beer from Brekeria, who are of course known for being a sour beer brewery. So this one is another beer from their Vild series, which is basically the barrel aged beer and we're having a taste of the Cassis today. So this one comes in at 6.5% and basically it is a black currant sour beer. They add black currants to this one after the uh, the blending process. But this is the third or fourth beer that I've tried from the Veiled series. They always seem to be really nice and I think in total this must be around the 15th beer or so that I've tried from Breakeria, but they're a very, very good brewery. Uh, this was the brewery that really got me into sour beers, to be honest with you, and having tried some of the more, um, I guess, some of the better known names, the, the traditional names, the big boys on the block, if you like, in Belgian beer, I have to admit, um, I've never really appreciated how good these guys are are actually uh, at producing these sour beers. So if you really want to try some really interesting sour beers and quite experimental sour beers, I guess you could say, then Breakery are a brewery that you uh, that you really should check out. I always thought their beers were good, but then when I tried them against some of, the, or when I was trying some of the more traditional Belgian sour beers, you realise just how good these guys are actually at what they do. And if you want to try some good Swedish craft beers, then you can't really go wrong with Breakery. And it's cool to have them so close to me here in, uh, in Lund, actually. So yeah. Um, so as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Breakery It before. No doubt there will be some more in the near future. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Breakery then. So Breakery were originally based in Jerslev, which is just outside of Malmö, but the company, as I mentioned to you earlier, are now based in Landskrona, which is kind of halfway between me here in Lund and Helsingborg, a little bit to the north. But the company was founded back in 2011 by the Eck brothers. So this is Frederick, Christian and Andre, and it's a specialist brewery in wild beers using lactobacillus and Britannomyces. They were the first brewery in Sweden uh, to specialise in producing sour beers, which is quite impressive when you consider the amount of infrastructure investment you need to do that. And as far as I'm aware, they're the only brewery in Sweden today that are still producing only sour beers and nothing else. There are quite a few other good sour beer breweries out there like Yemmerdalen in the very north. You've got Temple Breukes as well. Urbro Breukes are producing some interesting sour beers as well, among others. But as far as I know, Breakery are the only brewery in Sweden that are still completely dedicated to sour beers. But the original brewery that these guys had was in the old brew house in Jerusalem, which was a commune brewery for the local farmers. But they brewed their first beers in 2012 and this brewery had a very modest production capacity of only 500 litres per brew and that gave them a yearly output of around 38,000 litres. But as of 2015 they have their new brewery in Landskrona which can produce 20 hectolitres per brew and they have a fermentation capacity of 80 hectolitres as well. For a period of time they were producing their wild bunch beers continuously in Landskrona and brewing some of the sour patch beers uh, in Jerslev and a couple of the other kind of one-off beers too. But now all production is based in Landskrona. In 2014 this brewery called a little bit of a stir because they decided they were going to withdraw completely from Seistenbolaget, which is the state monopoly on alcohol here in Sweden. For those of you watching outside of Sweden, basically any beer that is over 3.5% or any alcohol for that matter that is over 3.5% has to be sold through Seistenbolaget. But the companies have um, a hell of a lot of trouble with paperwork and things like that. But that said, it is liberalising a bit now. But basically from 2014 until 2016, they focused on selling their beers abroad, mainly in Denmark from what I remember you could get the break of eight beers over in Denmark um, but for a period of time you weren't able to get these in Sweden at all from what I remember um, but their beers returned to Seistenbolaget in 2016. I reviewed the first one that they released back in Sweden actually 
which was uh, pretty nice. I forget exactly which one that was, to be honest with you. Now, I've reviewed so many of these, but um, it's good to have Breakery at back in Sweden, and it's good as well to see that, say, Stambolaga are um, sort of liberalising the rules a little bit and making it easier for craft breweries to get the more experimental beers out there. But like I said, a brewery that do some really interesting stuff, you know, uh, Lactobacillus and Britannomyces beers, and they are pretty damn good with it, and it's only recently uh, that I've you know, appreciated how good these guys are at what they actually do. Do after trying some of the, the Lambic beers and things like that. They really do some pretty damn awesome stuff here. So if you want to try some Swedish beers, as I mentioned earlier, Breakeria, you can't really go wrong with these guys. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about the brewery for the moment. If you want to learn a little bit more, of course, you can check out the brewery website in the description below and you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that. And that will keep you up to date with all the latest goings on at the brewery. But yeah, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then. We can get rid of the brewery notes for the moment. So I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open it up. For some reason the veiled beers um, always seem to have this kind of hand on the artwork or a, a hand that's very very similar. The other three or four that I tried with these um, had a very similar style of artwork to it actually which was kind of quite nice. The one thing I should say about the veiled beers, there is actually one of these that you can get in the supermarkets. There's one in the Ica supermarket in Landskrona that I'll need to pick up uh, at some point and have a go at. But um, yeah, as I said at the start of the video, this one is a 6.5% Cassis, which is a blackberry sour beer. Um, and you can see our black currant, I should say, not blackberry. And you can see there is the special veiled bottle cap on this one. And it tells you a little bit about this beer on the side. And it is, of course, European Union. Uh, organic certified. But it says on the side here, Cassis is a barrel aged sour ale with black currants added after blending. Cassis is a part of the Breakery at Veiled series. So uh, yeah, looks really nice this one. As I say, kind of funky style artwork on this. I have to admit, I do quite like that. But without further ado, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. I'm curious to see how this guy turns out. And of course, it does have a cap on it, but it's also got one of the corks. So we will just need to take a little minute to get this one out and into the thing. Let's see if this is actually working. I think it is starting to dig down now. Come on, in we go. Out. Nope, that's ah, the cork nearly broke there. That was worrying. But yeah, you can see they've actually got their own specially stamped corks as well, which is quite cool. But as you can see, a little bit of smoke on the opening as we open this beer up. But let's get it out and into the glass. Ooh, to say that looks lovely. We should be able to pour all of this one actually. Yeah, we'll just go for all of it. Might as well. So yeah, as you can see with this one, when it was pouring, it poured a lovely kind of uh, blood, almost like blood colour actually. Uh, you can tell I like heavy metal when I'm saying something like that, blood. But yeah, as you can see with this beer, um, it's poured a lovely sort of, I don't know if you can describe that as violet maybe? Um, it's a sort of cherry violet, uh, maroon, burgund, maroon kind of colour actually. Um, not sure exactly what colour to describe that as. I was never a great artist, so I was never too well versed in the colours. But yeah, it's a lovely, um, deep, kind of cherryish uh, colour, this one. It looks absolutely lovely. You can see there was about a half finger of frothy, a uh, quite pink coloured head on this one. But it was very, very frothy rather than being bumpy or anything. This beer, incidentally, is very, very hazy. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, and there's a few little ones just heading up towards the uh, the bottom of that head there. You can see a few tiny little bits of sediment just floating around in the bottom of this, um, uh, floating around in the bottom of this glass here. But um, yeah, it looks very nice. And you know, not I've never seen a Cassis before. This will be the very first Cassis. I try and know Lindemans in uh, Belgium do, uh, do beers like this. But um, this one, I have to say, I, yeah, I'm quite impressed with this. It should be a really, um, it should be a really nice beer. I quite like the appearance of this, but not overly surprising when you consider it is a blackberry sour. Maybe we would have expected it to be a little bit darker than this, uh, because, you know, black currants I think, usually are a little bit darker. I keep mixing up blackberry and black currants. Blech, it's annoying. But yeah, it looks very, very nice, this one. So let's take a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on. Yeah. So, I mean, straight away with this one, you are going to notice 
the um, you are going to notice straight away the the black bit uh, the the black currents coming out. I keep saying black brakes, that's annoying. You're going to notice the black currents coming out of this one straight away at you. It's got a really kind of nice and sharp citricky um, tartness coming out of it too. You will notice how tart these berries are. Um, it almost smells a little bit like nettly or something like that. There's just something in my head that makes me want to say there's a bit of an almost nettle quality to this one. Almost just a little touch. It's almost like a little touch uh, vegetally or herbal or something like that. It almost just smells like it smells like when you have brambles outside where the, the you know the black currants grow and the blackberries grow um, and then they're wet. It smells like these vines do after, um, I don't know if it's right to say vines, it smells like these plants do and once the earth opens up from the rain that's kind of, it's got that kind of interesting aroma to it kind of mixed in there. It's a bit of a subtlety but if you take the beer in a little bit more deeply for me that's what I'm really getting out of this one is it's, it really reminds me of my grandpa's old uh, blackcurrant uh, plants that he had and then when it used to rain on them they just had this slightly you know earthy herbal almost nettly type smell to them it's kind of it's really unusual actually it's because the soil releases certain gases and things once it rains and that's what gives you the um the aroma a little bit of my uh, environmental chemistry coming out from a massive degree there putting it to good use um but yeah the um it's nice that, I really like that. It's an interesting blend of things. I don't think I've come across um, that sort of aroma in the Breakery at Beers before. So that sort of herbally, vegetally, viney sort of thing, brambly sort of aroma is, is really new to me. Um, but lovely, juicy, black currenty notes to this one. I want to say there's a few more berries in this, to be honest with you. It does almost have a little bit of an aroma of blackberry to it as well. Um, and a sort of maybe a slightly reddish berry note. Yeah, maybe even a, a little touch of cherry or something like that. There's, de I think there's definitely a little bit more of a fruity complexity to it than blackberries, although they have only added blackberries. But you can get chemical reactions that will change the esters a little bit and give you a few, uh, you know, they'll give you a few different fruity aromas as well. But mainly, of course, the, the flavour will be focused on the blackberries and black or black currants. I keep doing that in this video. That's annoying. Yeah, but take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this one before you get stuck in. You can pick up a little bit of the hop in this one. There is a little touch of earthiness to it. Also some a, a little touch of a grassy kind of floral thing going on, but quite minimal that. Not too much in the way uh, of, of uh, prominence from the, the green side of the hops. But um, yeah, you can pick up a little bit of a kind of bready, wheaty note underneath this one too. So there will be a little bit of a malty presence. Maybe even a little touch of biscuit to this one. Um, but yeah, the main dominating thing of the aroma is, of course, the uh, the black currants and the sort of sh uh, citricky, sharp tartness to the beer, and also that um, kind of brambly aroma that I was talking about too. So as I always say, take a little bit of time and just enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck in. But we're going to have a taste of this one and just see what happens then. So this one is the Ville Cassis coming in at 6.5% from Breakeriet in Landskrona here in Skåne in the south of Sweden, a really good sour beer brewery and this is the very first time I'm trying a Cassis. So let's get stuck into this one then. Slange Skull. Yeah. I have to say, that's pretty nice actually. I do like how that's that's going together. You know, one of the things you always find with the, the breaker eight beers, and I always find this with sour beers, you do have to take a good couple of sips of them and just let your mouth almost adjust to the shock of these beers, if that makes sense. But yeah, that is nice. I really like how this one's going together. Um, one of the things for me, the marker of a good sour beer is to have a nice impact that just smooths out really nicely. And Breakeria, over the last, I mean, I've been drinking these beers for about four years now, the, uh, the Breakeria beers, maybe no, three years, I guess. Um, I've been drinking these beers over the last three years, and you can see them just improving as they go, which is great to see. For me, I always like my sour beers to have a nice sharpness at the beginning, then for it just to smooth out and become nice and sweet. 
at the end. Um, and again, they've pulled this off really nicely. The more and more that you drink of this beer, the smoother and juicier and sweeter that it gets. Yeah, that's really good. Um, so yeah, let's try and break this beer down then. What you're going to notice with this one is that the sort of lingering part of the, the malt base, or the centre of your palate, if you like, is definitely a nice, smooth, wheaty, um, wheaty, white, bready malt base there. In the centre of your palate, um, I guess, no, we'll stick with the wheaty side of things. If you come further forward on your tongue, you definitely get a little touch of a, of a woody note to this one. There's a, I, I want to say there is definitely a little element of vanilla in here, but it's quite minimal. If you go to the very centre of your palate and then just move forward, I think you will detect a little bit of a kind of vanilla flavour in there. Of course, it's usually oak barrels they use for um, for these things, and you are going to get a little bit of a vanilla flavour out of the oak, and you can pick that up in this beer really nicely. And I'm finding the further that you go into the aftertaste with this beer, the sweeter it gets and the more prominent that vanilla note comes out of the beer actually. So yeah, this beer, this is nice, I like this. Um, it does have a high rating on Rate Beer. I think it was a 90, it was well into the 90s, like a 96, 97 or something when I had a little quick look at it. And it was high in the three stars uh, on Untapped 2. So this one, it is really nice and it seems to be quite highly rated. I can see why, to be honest with you. It would be interesting to try the original one without the barrel aging and see how that is too. Um, but this beer has a really nice impact. You're going to feel that just behind the front curve of the tongue. You're really going to feel that sharp, um, tart, citricky impact of this one. But it smooths out and really I like the way the malt base in this beer just pushes its way out. In the very centre of your palate too, you're going to notice there is a little bit of a biscuity flavour to this one, but mainly your malty side of the beer, lovely smooth, wheaty, white bready quality, a little bit of a woody note further towards the front corners of the palate, a little bit of biscuit in the middle, and then you'll notice that a vanilla, sort of vanilla-ish flavour pushes its way out of this one too. Um, on the hoppy side of things, again it's quite simple, you've got a little touch of earthiness there in the back corners of the palate. As you came further forward along the sides of the tongue, the earthiness just smoothed out a little bit. You get a little touch of a herbal quality there and a nice sort of, um, there is a nice little bit of a kind of floral, um, there is a wee touch of a floral aromaticity there, a little bit of a light grassiness just around the front kind of corner, uh, the front curve of the tongue. Usually I think they use German hops, um, you know, like Hallertau or Titnang or even maybe Czech or, or even Styrian Goldings or something like that. They use one of these noble type hops, either the German ones, the Czechs or the, the Slovenian ones in these sour beers. And you can pick up a little bit of that vibe from this beer, just the nice smoothness and subtlety of these hops. Um, But yeah, um, the the way that this all the flavours in this beer go together is really nice. This is the, one of the more complex sour beers I think that I've had actually, which is nice. But it's definitely about how all these flavours fit together rather than being too bold in any one regard. But let's talk about the fruity side of the beer now. So you're going to feel, if you just go behind the front curve of your palate, you really feel the sharp citric notes just lingering there around the kind of front edge of the tongue. The black currants in this one, are really nice. They do have that little bit of sharpness to it, but they get juicier and juicier the further you go into the flavour of this one. I want to say there is a little bit of a, a blackberry, kind of red berry-ish type flavour to this one as well. Um, and as I say, they have only added black currants to this beer, but it does taste as if it's a little bit more kind of complex to that. The fruity notes in the beer almost, uh, it almost it's almost as if they become a little bit more candied the further that you go into the flavour with this one, which again is, is really quite nice. So just pay attention to that. Front of your palate, you will notice the vanilla flavours start to push their way out more as well, and it almost comes across like a vanilla um, berry dessert kind of thing, which is kind of... Um, which is really interesting. As I say, I, I really like how this one goes together. And it's, uh, as I say, my first Cassis that I've ever tried. But a lot of the peer reviews seem to suggest that this is quite highly regarded. And I can see why, in terms of just thinking about this one in the context of being a sour beer, it's a very good sour beer, in my uh, in my opinion, at least. Mm. 
but yeah. That sort of viney, earthy kind of thing that I was talking about in the aroma, you can pick out a little bit of that. It's almost just on the front kind of, it's sort of towards the front of the palate, but you get it when you take a gulp of this beer, you will get it, but then very quickly it fades away and it's just replaced by that nice malty, um, woody, vanilla type smoothness to the beer. You will get it at the very start, so just pay attention. It's almost like uh, if you, maybe about two thirds of the way forward on the tongue, there is just a little tiny touch of that, that um, air, slightly earthy, herbal, vegetal kind of thing coming out of the beer in the middle of the palate. Um, as I say, it reminds me of those kind of brambly, viney type aromas I was picking up in the aroma. But um, it's really nice how this beer goes together. It's a big thumbs up from me. And, uh, you know, break it, it. This, this one, this one's probably the, my favourite one that I've had out of the Veiled series so far. Um, I've got some real favourite beers from this brewery, you know, um, Sour and Salt is one of my favourite ones I've had from these guys, Swedish Ninja, the Wrapped in Red was really nice as well, and there's probably another couple that I'm forgetting, but in the Veiled series, this is probably my favourite one that I've had uh, so far, actually. And this is a brewery that are that good that it's quite hard for them to impress me, I guess, in some way. Maybe I hold these guys to a little bit of a higher standard, but this is really nice. This is probably my favourite. Uh, this is my favourite veal beer that I've had so far, let's just say that. Um, so yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel of this beer then, I would say... Um, Mid-bodied. Carbonation is, is quite smooth in this one, actually. It doesn't have a little bit of a crispness to it, like some of the, the beers can have. Um... The mouthfeel overall for me, it does have an oily element to it, but it's also a little bit wetter and a little bit more sharp, if that makes sense. Um, no real bitterness to this one. I think you're lucky if you've got about 10 or 15 IBUs in this beer, but it does have a nice impact to it. It does have a nice little bit of sharpness when you first take it in, but it smooths it out really nicely, and the malt base gradually becomes more and more sweet uh, and smooth, but you've also got a nice juicy fruitiness to this one as well um, but I like how this beer goes together it's definitely one of the more complex ones I think that I've had from Breakery It and it is just all about how these different flavours fit together I've realised as well that I forgot to tell you this was released in the small parties on the I want to say the third of May 2019 through uh, Seistenbol Agate here in Sweden but it has been released before from what I gather I think it was released back in uh, like October or November of 2018 as well. But yeah, this is a really, really uh, damn good Cassis spear, this one. Uh, it's my first Cassis that I've tried, but in terms of just thinking about it as a sour beer, it stands up very, very well. Like I said, my favourite veiled beer that I've had so far. So I will need to try and make sure that I can try some of the original Belgian um, Cassis spears. I know that Lindemans have one, so I will need to see if any of the other um, Lambic sour beer producers down there have any and see if I can get a hold of those. But yeah, a lovely beer this one and uh, if you get the chance to try this, I highly recommend that you do. So you let, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. The Veiled Cassis coming in at 6.5%, a black currant sour beer, not black breeze as I've said a couple of times in this video, a black currant sour beer from uh, Breakery in Landskrona. Uh, here in Skåne in the south of Sweden. So once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Breakaway as well. And we will definitely return to these guys in the next little pile. And I'm sure we'll review more from the Veiled series too. But this one is definitely my favourite so far. Thanks again for watching. Check out my social media. And I will catch you guys very soon. Slanja, Skull, Kampai.